seven milliliters. Result of three. I need a mover. Counter Aries, counter Malmus, all in favor. All right. Uh, so, uh, Deb, you have the floor. <laughs> Are you done yet? Thanks for the presentation. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, I've already thank you very much for the uh, the flight presentation and the photo walk. And uh, I'm not going to say too much today uh, because I've already put you through the cases on that. And I've already sent you the email talking about what I would like to see from you guys this year. So as you know, I've been doing this for a while, and so the the big priorities are uh, for communities in bloom are supporting the OCP. Uh, using it as a vehicle for revitalization of the downtowns. Um, I think participating in projects and events is a big source of pride for the community. Um, but the, the other angle that I've talked about in the past that I don't think we've really gotten to yet is the whole idea of our achievements in communities in Bloom and communities in Bloom as a vehicle for tourism and bringing people to town. So I've been spending some time with Carly. I'm working a bit more at that, but I also, uh, another thing that I, I really am, am kind of hoping that we can uh, promote more is the farmer's market. And so because of that, between Fungi Fest and Communities in Bloom, I want to make sure that I have a booth there every week. I'm going to do a lot of advertising around workshops, um, so things like our normal um, uh, water rain barrel, like instead of me delivering them to people, it is we will have them at the market. People can come there and pick them up. I'm talking to the CSRD about composters, uh, grafting workshops, bee workshops, you know, fungi workshops associated with making fungi posts or, or stumps that Andy does and such. So every week to have something there. So the idea is, is that uh, as part of that promotion, we're getting people down to the farmer's market, but also getting the word out there a lot more about communities and bloom and trying to get more volunteers and participation. Really working the angle of the partnerships with the different groups, talking to everybody. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, I'm not going to talk about the, the projects and the that, that Daryl and I have been talking about. I'm assuming that at this stage of the game, uh, I sent you an email talking about the proposals. They may or may not work out. Every year I find that there's uh, things that, that come to fruition, things that don't. And sometimes things come out of the blue and, and we jump on them too. But what I can tell you is that I'm always going to work with my partner, Daryl, and he's always um, either going to say yay or nay, and we're going to stay within the budget. But I'm really, what I'm telling you is I'm working the promotion and the teams and more involvement this year. I am going to expect things from all of you guys this year with the judges coming again. I will keep it to a minimum, but it's just showing that everybody in the community is involved. And I will talk to you guys more about that closer to the judging. You've got the dates for the judging. We've got the dates for the uh, cleanup. I guess my, I don't know if you guys have any questions for me. So, but it's, it's that's basically the angle this year. So. Oh, go ahead. Daryl. <laughs> Thank you for stepping up to the plate. <laughs> I used to be her go-to guy, so congratulations. <laughs> the difference is, is Daryl actually is helpful in Oh, no. <laughs> nice. oh nice. Well done. I'm sorry. Oh, well done. Jeff, Jeff. It's a poly score. And you I'm just teasing him. It's what I do. So. <laughs> I like the color of the shirts this year. That is <laughs> color for this year so as you guys know i'm a bit of an opportunist and if i have the opportunity to
to suck up to the CIB judges and do things that make, you know, like they said, go, oh, wow, look that she's paying attention. I do it. So it's, it's just part of, the, part of the game. Just recording that way. Very nice help. And I think Pedro for, for handling all that. She was great. So. So when is community cleanup? What day? April 30th. Or April 30th. All right. Any other comments or questions for Deb at this point? Go ahead. Thanks, quick. Deb, for everything you're doing. No, it's all good. I mean, it's, it's Thank you. I, I like this stuff, as you know. So wouldn't exist without you. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen with the awards uh, ceremony this year with Communities of Bloom? Do you have any idea? Because we were going to. I, they sent a note out, and I think it's so. The national awards are in Victoria. And I think what they're doing is just make it in the evening or whatever. And I think they're just making the official ones a luncheon earlier that day. So um, I will keep you guys posted on that. Of course, it's always great if we can get somebody there. But I know that you guys always have to wonder if it ties in with UBCM and, and all that stuff. So um, if, if none of you can make it, I will do my best to make it. Because if it's our first year ever getting five blues, I gotta be there, man. So, Big so. Daryl with you. <laughs> you know what, you guys? I think we have. You know, we've got, we've got so much done in the last two years since the judges were here, and you know, like, so I, I'm looking at putting together the achievements for the uh, since the judges were last year, and and commenting on on you know their findings and you know who should do this. this is, I think we have a really good shot at it. So, uh, one other question, how is it with volunteers, uh, have, are the numbers up or you, where are you at with that? Um, you know what, I've got good solid volunteers. I think some of you know that my husband's retiring March 18th and he is really good at this stuff. Like I can say go out and do those 10 gardens and he head down butt up and he gets them done, right? So. Um, so I'm going to make him do a lot of stuff, but but uh, people like Anna Mark and, and uh, Linda and, and you know like I've got some really good volunteers. And then the other thing is, is as you saw with the uh, community cleanup, uh, we got between the the Bible Church and pickleball group and that we had the biggest turnout we've ever had. And so I'm starting to make a lot of better inroads with different groups in town that. Want to make a difference and want to help other people, and so that you know that it helps a lot. All right, any more comments for Deb? All right, Deb, thanks for what you do. You have no for your support. I tell you what, we certainly appreciate it. I mean, communities in blue has come a long way since you took it on. Thank you. This has come a long way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks, Deb. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. All right, uh, Carly on. Yep. Okay. The second was development corporate quarterly update. Carly. Hello, you... everyone. Good evening. Yeah, you've got uh -huh. the floor. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Kelly, are you able to put that sheet up or should I share my presentation? Nope. I am doing it as we speak. Can you see it? I can't, I've got mine in front of me. If everyone can see it, then I can just go through it. Yeah, hold on. All right, there we go. All right, so uh, this is the obviously the first update of 2022 for um, mayor and council. So I'll just take you through what has taken place and what is coming up over the next couple of weeks. So if we look at the tourism side, um, the website is an ongoing update. I'm getting the content ready to shift it over to start promoting summer. It's been promoting winter for the past four months. So we're ready to start uh, peppering in the summer content there. Uh, for adver advertising and marketing right now, we've got the Thompson Okanagan Backroads map book. It's got a two year distribution cycle, which means it'll be on the, the shelf for about three years. Uh, the district of Sycamus, the beautiful aerial shot from the hang glider ramp made their front cover for the Thompson Okanagan. So that should be hitting the, um, distribution in all of the, the stores that they have or their distribution outlets in, I believe in the next two months. We have the Kelowna Airport Arrivals digital ads. I've gotten really good feedback from people that I've heard that have uh, reached out to say that they have seen them. So every month I get to rotate the ads. So 
Uh, there's four images on six different boards that rotate in the arrivals area. And then the Shoe Shop Experience Guide, uh, we put together a list of top 10 things to do in Sycamore, so that'll be going up. Oh. Some of the initiatives that I'm currently working on with the help of the Tourism Advisory Committee is we are updating the visitor guide. So Sheila and I are um, collaborating. We're taking her existing visitor guide and uh, basically pumping it up. And uh, we'll have a, a very well-defined, wonderful visitor guide ready by May long weekend. Uh, the off-road vehicle map, so dirt bike and ATV, I'll um, be working on a specific map for that. So that'll be the one off-road asset created for 2022. There's a trails module that I'm working on getting some in, information on for the, the website. So essentially a much more user-friendly interactive mapping um, option for trails in and around Sycamus. And then continuing on with content development. And currently right now we're working on two film projects with Sled Sycamus. So a lot of it'll be content that'll be built out for next year. So it's a, an opportunity to highlight some of our restaurants some of our local riding areas and it'll be pushed out through multiple platforms uh, to kick off. There might be a little bit of content that's put out this season, but a lot of it will be for the uh, start of next season. And then events and activations. So the MRDT plan was 100% approved earlier this month. They are really happy with the strategic direction that we're going with it. And now it's a matter of putting into place or putting into action all of the planning. So the geocache tour I'm working on right now, um, we'll be forming a geocache committee. So I'll be putting out a, a public notice to see if there's any avid geocachers that would like to join the committee to help make this tour come to life in Sycamus. And then most of the actual event plans will be pushed towards the fall just to ensure that we're able to um, activate around them in, instead of that sort of playing with whatever restrictions are happening. So we've got the Shishwap Ultra, the Fungi Fest we're supporting Deb, the Salmon Run working with Shishwap tourism to make sure that we can identify some local salmon run viewing sites within our area that uh, the Adams River Society, Shishwap Tourism and Destination BC will push out. And then I'm working with Jamie to support her Ketlik Harvest Festival in September. Does anyone have any questions on tourism? Go ahead, Councillor McKay, then Councillor Anderson. Geocaching, uh, how popular is that? What kind of draw is that? So uh, thank you for the question through the chair. Uh, the geocache tour is actually a very, uh, it, it's having its moment right now, especially uh, it got really popular last year. I've got some really good studies I can share about the economic impact on geocachers that come to different communities that specifically host a geo tour. So we do around Sycamus, if you wanted to look, there are a lot of geocaches around the, commun uh, the community. But when you actually create a tour, there's a whole nother level of, you know, families, specifically, um, and a lot of uh, couples and independent geocachers that will travel based on the types of geocaches you have within your tour. So this year, the reason that we chose to invest uh, heavily this year is because the geo stock, which brings about 5,000 people in to spend a week geocaching is actually happening in Abbotsford. And talking to the gentleman, that's my contact out of the US, he said that a lot of times he'll see spillover um, geocachers from a main event that will plan an entire vacation around that and they'll maybe fly into Calgary and do all the geocaches leading through up to Abbotsford. So uh, there's a bunch of mapping, et cetera, that shows the areas that, that geocachers have come in because it's all done through your cell phone. That's how you log. They have a really good tracking metrics that show what that economic impact will be. So we'll be able to measure at the end of the year how our return on investment was. And it's another opportunity as well to engage our local businesses to encourage you know, geocache discovery at their locations. Thank you. Dr. Anderson? Um, uh, Carly, I was just wondering if you could quickly, if you have it, the uh, back roads uh, covered, just so council could have a look at it. I... You can do it after this presentation if you'd like. I don't know if it's easy to yeah. bounce back and forth. I could possibly send it to Kelly and then she could once she gets it, she could show it up. Sure. It's just a really good shot and we're fortunate to have it. Yeah, it's so it is wonderful. I'm really excited to see the hard yeah. copy of it when it comes yeah. out. Okay, moving on to economic development. So as you know, uh, we started down the process of getting a dedicated uh, development corporation website. 
uh, the back end has gone through board feedback and now I will be training tomorrow with Trilogy and I'm hoping to spend the next couple of weeks focusing on building it all out, um, transitioning a lot of the information off the district site into the new pages and uh, platform or, or modules, sorry, that we have within this, uh, the, the DevCore website. So the target launch will be March 15th. Again, like I said, I'm going to spend a couple of weeks putting it together, send it to the board for some feedback. And hopefully, uh, you know, that March 15th target is something that's doable. We did a workforce roundtable, and I thank Councillor McKeough for joining us. So this was a, a an, uh, an initiative, sorry, that was designed because of the labor challenges, the workforce challenges that we've been hearing from businesses. Late, for, you know, it, it pretty much is a problem that extends right across the province. But we partnered with SAIDS and Community Future Shushwap to invest in some vicinity labor market data. And we hosted a session, a roundtable session, which if anyone would like it, I have the recording that I can send out. And what this did is we brought together a bunch of service providers and experts in um, you know, going through this data together to showcase some opportunities for businesses and how they can uh, activate some programs, some granting opportunities. And with the help of WorkBC, they've decided to spearhead a labor market committee. And that committee, we are going through some more um, industry sessions to make sure that we, we develop a program that people want to be a part of and it doesn't just fall flat. So WorkBC is definitely going to take that over. When I have more details, I will share that. And one of the nice things that came out of this workforce roundtable was uh, SAIDS and the DOSDC created a resource guide for businesses that we're just polishing and then we'll be sending out. This basically, again, will be a tool for all businesses uh, that don't necessarily have the time, especially owner operators, to attend all of these webinars. And it just outlines all of the programming within the area through Okanagan College, a lot of the staffing opportunities, um, uh, internships, etc. So it, it's one of those things that the business community can can digest it at their own pace. And then some of the programming around business support uh, that we're looking at is um, in the process of building the speaker series courses, and those will be a hybrid in person and over webinar. So we've got emergency preparedness, um, succession planning, grant writing. We've got some things I've been listening to what the business community is looking for and we're trying to build out programming around those needs to make it very beneficial for our, our sick news businesses. I'm working with Sheila to do a biz after biz. And what this is, is it's going to be an event that we're hoping to activate in two locations down on Main Street and then over at the Parkland Mall. Again, this is in its uh, building phase right now. So we'll share more information as soon as we have it. But the goal is to really get businesses out and about you know, putting um, faces to the new businesses, really allowing people to sort of showcase their wares, especially uh, a focus on our home-based businesses, entrepreneurs, people that are looking to make that jump from their, you know, their basement or their garage to, you know, hopefully a brick and mortar or, you know, looking at more of that exporting depending on the type of product. Another program is Women in Business. Again, this is very infant. Um, I, I, as I uh, plan it out and get more information. I'll definitely share that. And then youth digital programming. So uh, one of the development corporation board members, director Jeremy Fair is helping me uh, look at some opportunities. We know that we want to invest in, you know, tech industry and connectivity, et cetera, in Sycamus. And this tech industry could be a really um, easy industry to implement within our, our community and bringing youth up and showing them and giving them the tools to, to test out these types of, you know, whether it's um, augmented reality, virtual reality, gaming, uh, programming, coding, et cetera. We'd love to work with Okanagan College to sort of bring those programs a little bit more to life um, in town and give the youth something that we could potentially do in, in a, a camp style format. And that's all. If anybody has any questions, I can answer what I can. Elder McCabe, more, more of a comment than a question. Uh, the Labor Market Committee, uh, the District of Sycamus is firing up a, a housing committee, and uh, there's three councillors and three members at large from the community, Brendan Dazelle, Siobhan Rich, and uh, Matt Baumgartner. So, uh, you know, when I was at that uh, Workforce Roundtable, it's so closely tied uh, uh, market labor with uh, housing. So. Uh, those two committees should definitely uh, keep in touch with each other. Thank you. And yes, I will definitely keep everybody informed. Both myself and Lana Fit will be sitting on the committee as well. 
and we'll be able to relay any information. And as well, once we figure out how that committee looks, we'll def we're, we're hoping to put out an expression of interest so that people that really feel like they have um, information or a desire to, to sit on this will have that opportunity. So it will be open to everybody to you know, uh, send in an expression of interest. Yeah, I see some crossover between those two because of the connection between housing and labor market force. Matt, Matt Baumgartner is the other one, and he was on the original um, lab, labor market uh, study with the Shoe Shop uh, Community Foundations four or five years ago. So that'd be a good tie there. Officer Bushel. <clears throat> Through the chair. Uh, yeah, good work there, Carly. Lots of, lots of good information, and you look like you're pretty busy. Um, just wanted to, you know, let all the other councillors know and, and staff that if they haven't had a chance to pop into your new office, uh, pop in there. It's a, it's a great, looking, it's looking really good and looking forward to it working out well for you. Thank you. I actually can't believe I didn't mention that. I definitely would love to uh, welcome everybody to pop in for a, for a coffee and check it out. It's We're still putting the, the small finishing touches and pieces together, but uh, please feel free to stop by whenever you guys have a chance. Thank you, Anderson. Go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah your office is uh, what a great space. It's uh, you know, as far as uh, um, ECDEV office, like it's very welcoming and a place that looks like it's going to have a lot of business going on in it soon. Um, as far as the website goes, Carly, do we have and is there plans for? Um, and we talked a bit about this before. A space on the website where you are advertising for businesses to come to Sycamore. Sycamore, you know, businesses that we don't have here. We talked about it briefly. Um, so when people go to the ECDEV website for Sycamore, they look at it and they go, whoa, you know what? It looks like they need a laundromat. So when business people are looking at opportunities in Sycamore, um, a bike store, uh, you know, things like that, that would tie into our rail trail would just tie into you know, RV parks and the houseboat community and, you know, with no laundry facility. Do we have a space for that? For the chair? Yeah, right now the module that would most closely align with that idea would be the, the commercial listing development. Um, uh, apologies there, my mute kicked on. Uh, as I was saying, a... Um, a listing page. I feel like I tomorrow when I do my training, I will ask the um, uh, Trilogy Solutions who built the website if there is a way that we could incorporate something like that where there might be some feedback page or an ideas page. I'll maybe offline it with you, Councillor Anderson, to see what that could potentially look like. Because again, right now, when a development or a developer, sorry, or anybody comes to the website, what they'll see is they can. Uh, they can submit a listing so the realtors can go on and they can actually submit their commercial rental or or sales and uh other than that i think that's the the parameters with which that module goes but definitely something to look into thank you all right any other comments or questions from carly all right carly thanks very much it looks like we're in for a really busy summer so keep up the good work mm -hmm. and uh I have visited your office and it really looks good. So yeah, it's uh, pretty impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Carly. Did you get that covered, Kelly? All right. Uh, Act that she didn't email it. Um, I checked a few times. Do you have strategic priorities? Anybody want to comment on any of the priorities? All right. Not hearing anyone, so the <clears throat> Move on to uh, councillors' reports. Uh, Councillor Bushel, you want to start? Through the chair, I don't think I have anything to report. I've been away. I've been out of the country. <laughs> nice and warm down in uh, Vegas. <laughs> Councillor Anderson, thank you. I am good this week as well. Thank you. Councillor McCabe. Just taking that online course from uh, British Columbia Not for Profit Housing Association about uh, Ready Start Build. It's a very interesting course. And that's about it. Okay. Councillor Aries. Uh, nothing to report. What's your mom's? Yeah. What is it? Councillor Evans. 
Uh, just one thing, I would like to challenge everybody on council to buy, um, get the for me, $20 grad auction tickets because they can't have their dry grad auction yet. Um, but they're likely going to have grads, so you can get a house school trip, a whole bunch of things. So the high school is selling them the pack through me. If you want if you want a ticket, I can hook you up. <laughs> 20 bucks. I bought one the other day and I'm hoping that I get that houseboat trip for my family. All right. Yeah. Well, with me, I've been attending all kinds of budgetary meetings the last little while. So, um, and I just uh, want to comment uh, the passing of Canute, uh, Greg Kyle's father in law. And um, he was, uh, he was a um, pioneer when it came to the houseboat industry and and um and sycamus and uh he was a really nice generous and kind man and uh he's going to be sorely missed all right uh that's my report um moving on uh do we have anybody that, on the line that would have their hand up Colleen, go ahead. I just want to point out, Carly just sent us the cover to the Thompson Okanagan Backcountry um, brochure magazine. Or a magazine, I get book. It's actually a book. So yeah, that's 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 the cover. Oh. Isn't that amazing? That, and that's two and a half years on the shelf. So that's just every day here. It's days. you know, and it was we we got it because the picture was great. Normally they probably charge for a cover shot. So, but it's a it's a brilliant it's a brilliant picture so yeah yay sycamus go sycamus go <laughs> it's nice that they recognize us yeah but that is an awesome it is an awesome picture when you take that picture and you just go up to the kite ramp it's amazing um anybody online that would uh have... if anyone uh, wishes to address council please raise your hand No hands up. No hands online, but there's one. Okay, Deb, go ahead. It was silly, but I wanted to mention something about the fungi fest. I didn't want it to be part of uh, what I say, but I've been talking to David Ganella, who's the executive director of the uh, Santa I would like to talk to them. I've talked to them in the past about taking over kind of a music <laughs> festival part of the fungi fest. We've always tried to build that in. Obviously, in the last two years, it didn't work so well. Um, but there's a limited amount we can build on the Bungie Fest because you can only really take 30 x or 30 um, people out with an expert at a time in the bush. That's just all you can do. So making it a bigger food and music event really takes something a little bit more than I have to offer. So I've been talking to him about it. He's very interested, obviously, Roots and Blues has suffered a lot in the last few years, too. He's been putting in some grant applications to try and do some things to expand. So he said he's talking to his new creative director, and he'll get back to me. But just kind of putting that out there. So. All right. Colleen, go ahead. I'm just going to follow up a comment on that. I think that uh, it's really important that, uh, and I think it's because it's on the ECDEV um, agenda as well. It's something that they want to get involved with. So maybe working with Carly and. Yeah, and I'm, I've been talking to. Okay, about good. This. Perfect. Okay, thanks. All right. Any other comments? All right. Any other hands up? Not that I see, no. All right. And we're going to move on. Okay, on to staff reports 22. 2022 local government election uh, recommendation that pursuant to section 58 1 and 2 of the local government act jennifer brooms be appointed chief election officer for conducting the 2022 general local election with power to appoint other election officials as required for the administration and conduct of the 2022 general election and that sarah kylo be appointed deputy chief election officer for the 2022 general local election. I need a mover on this. Councillor McCabe, seconded by Councillor Erich. Jen, do you want to comment at all? Yeah, thank you, through the chair. Um, so I've actually prepared a, a brief uh, overview of some key dates for council as well. And I would like a little bit of feedback on the administration of the election. Um, so it is a requirement that the first step is that you appoint an election officer. Um, and so that recommendation is on the table right now. 
Um, some key dates that I thought would be important for council to be aware of is just that we are approaching in March 8th and April 14th, that six month BC residency requirement for candidates and then voters respectively. Um, so that is coming up soon. Uh, the nomination period will be August 30th through September 9th, and I'm expecting that nomination packages will be ready no later than mid-July. Um, September 17th is when the uh, campaign period begins, and then October 5th is the advanced voting day, October 15th being the general voting day. We will be using uh, automated voting machines as we did last year, because, or last time, because we did have uh, a two-year contract. Um, so that's very exciting. <laughs> Um, but what I wanted some direction from Council today is the option for mail ballot voting. So legislation was amended in 2021 that would allow, um, it used to be it was only if you were had mobility issues or you're out of country. They've now opened that up that if you prefer mail ballot voting, if you'd rather, um, kind of in a post-pandemic you know, world, mail ballot voting is, the you know, popularity has increased. Previously, I believe um, the former chief election officer did look at it and it just wasn't as popular when she did a kind of poll of surrounding municipalities. I don't have a huge turnout, but it might be different now. Um, so it, it's not hugely um, onerous administratively. There's not a huge cost associated to it. It does kind of widen the scope. Uh, you still need to be a BC resident. So um, non-resident property electors, so people that don't live here but own property can vote if they're a BC resident. And so having that mail ballot voting would be an option for them to, to chime in. Um, I, I would still need to prepare a bylaw. So council doesn't need to like make a firm decision today. Um, I just want some direction if council wants me to start preparing that those amendments to the bylaw, or if you're, if you're not really interested in offering mail ballot voting. Right. Well, thanks for that. Um, we can consider that. Uh, Councillor Bushell? Yeah, the mail-in ballot uh, will probably be pretty active, I think, this campaign because people haven't traveled for a couple of years and, and a lot of BC people might want to go south. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it might, be, <clears throat> it might be a good time to try it out. Mm -hmm. okay. Councillor Malmas? Uh, verification, because like in the United States, it was just an absolute vote. We're back on there. So, how, how do you control, like, that ballot? There, there's a there is a process. They have to register for the mail ballot voting, and then I have to be satisfied that they are who they are. Um, so it's providing copies of ID, um, and they've got quite a little checklist. So. Um, there is the onus on them to prove, uh, especially like a non-resident property elector. Um, and again, it would come down to, you know, me being satisfied that they are who they are. We do have some time to. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, I just wanted to get, I will prepare the amendments. It's not the owners. So I'll prepare the amendments and it will have, like council will have to adopt that bylaw. So you absolutely can change your mind. Um, I just wanted council to start thinking about, do we want to offer that option this time when we haven't in the past? Okay. All right. Councillor Evans. Yeah, I just think it's a good idea to give folks that option because there's going to be the course point and then there's, there's still people that are going to be cautious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. All right. Uh, on the resolution, uh, we had a mover and a second on We did, yes. Okay. I'm going to call a question on the resolution. All those in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. All right. Um, now going into B, uh, <coughs> Sycamus Development Court Director's recommendation that Denny Laughlin be appointed as a director to the District of Sycamus Development Corporation Board. I need a mover on this. Councillor Anderson, second by Councillor Bushell. Jen, you want to comment on this as well? Yeah, thank you to the chair. This is simply a housekeeping item. Uh, following the resignation of Director Sir Kilmo, um, we did have Denny uh, appointed as an alternate, and it was just recommended from our legal that we uh, that council formalize him as a as a full time. All right, Councillor Anderson. Um, I, I yeah, I agree with this. Now that leaves us with no alternate now. Correct. So is the is council um, and the board, are they looking for another alternate alternate? Because I'd like to make a suggestion. Okay, so at this time we we, we haven't. 
Um, this September is when we'd be looking doing a call for volunteers and they're all of their appointments are up this September. So uh, if, if you'd like, we could put out a call to see if there's any volunteers that would want to step up now, um, or we could try and limp along and see if we make it to September. The, um, the reason I'm bringing it up is because I think that someone, my personal opinion, I don't know how council feels, but I'd like to see someone on the, the from the board, the Chamber of Commerce board, because mm -hmm. they are so connected to the community. I'd like to see them, someone sit on this board as well, just for, you know, uh, so no one's, so that everyone's not working in a silo. They're all kind of working together and know what's on the table. Just so my thought. If we put out a call for volunteers, maybe then um, you've got some ideas in mind, they would you'd help with the recruitment of that? Sure. All right, uh, put the resolution on the table right now. Uh, any other comments in regards to this particular individual? Okay, I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor, heard unanimously as well. All right. Um, uh, BC Timber Sales Wiseman Creek referral recommendation that the council recommend to the Ministry of Forest Lands, Natural Resources, Operation and Rural Development. <coughs> and be placed on logging activity in the Sycamus and Wiseman Creek community watershed areas due to a high geohazard risk created by the 2021 Two Mile Creek fire. I need a mover on this. Councillor Evans, second by Councillor Aries. Any comments or questions on this? Okay, hearing none, I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor? Carried unanimously as well, thank you. All right, we have a public <coughs> statutory hearing scheduled for six o'clock. So I'm gonna carry on with the agenda and we'll come back to this uh, at, uh, at a later date. We are getting- Yes, so we'll have to wait on that one too. Maybe do correspondence. Can I uh, 12? <laughs> Okay, we have to wait on this one because that's after the public hearing. Well, that's part of the public. Yeah. Hearing. Okay. So. Okay, so let's go into correspondence. All right. Uh, so in the correspondence, <laughs> there is a list here. Um, so Village of Chase and BC Epilepsy Society. Uh, Anybody want to comment on the resolution by the Village of Chase when it comes to the wildfire petition? Councillor Evans, go ahead. Um, yeah, having heard the uh, provincial budget yesterday and the creation of full-time a uh, full-time BC wildfire force, I'm wondering if Village of Chase didn't know that that was a possibility when they wrote this letter. Having said that, I would support their what they're asking for. All right. Any other comments, Court? Oh, I, I agree with Bob. <clears throat> I sure. All right. So that means that uh, we would send a letter of support. So staff, do you need a resolution on that? We can formalize it with a resolution. Do you make that resolution? Yeah, I would like to. Sure. Yeah, okay. And I am Bob's Maybe. making one. He just doesn't know what it is. Uh, provide a letter of support. Uh, <laughs> and I have better words. like the chase. Yeah. <laughs> I drew an arrow to the letter. Our, moved by Councillor McCabe. I need a second on it. Councillor Aries, any other comments or questions on this? Call a question. All in favor? Well. Any other comments on any other correspondence? I, I wouldn't mind. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair. So I just want to comment that as per our new correspondence, correspondence policy that was adopted last meeting, um, this request to light a roundabout purple on, uh, I believe it's March 26th for epilepsy awareness, um, we forwarded to Daryl. Daryl will take care of that, but we do still put it on the agenda in case so council is aware that we've gotten that request, that we're carrying through with that request. If and council has any objections to that request, you can let us know, but we'll be putting all of, we're getting quite a few of, can we light the roundabouts? So um, we're just gonna put them on correspondence for information for now. And then unless there's major objection from council, <laughs> um, Daryl will carry through with, uh, it's pink today, so. You wanna comment, Daryl? Uh, yeah, we can do that. It's already scheduled. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see the 
the live shot of the roundabout now to see that it's pink. Oh, the roundabout. Oh, sorry. Pink. <clears throat> okay. I'm all over it. Didn't know I had pink as a color. <clears throat> Ta -da. Ta -da. There you go. Pink. What a relief. Same color. <laughs> 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 Here's where it just starts to fade to another color. <laughs> Please don't be green. <laughs> With all these recommendations, you wanna you wanna up the budget for your batteries? For your, your... We just have batteries. Battery budget. <laughs> you just change that on your phone. Just <laughs> press that. <button. laughs> oh, good job. I mean, we got 15 minutes to kill. We might as well be watching. Let's watch. Let's watch traffic. See what's going on in town. <laughs> Go ahead, Bob. You guys um, seriously take this few minutes, run down to the round boat in your pink shirts, and do a picture there. Cold outside, honey. It's cold out there. <laughs> That's a really good idea. Leave it up. How does somebody watch that? It's very, uh, very peaceful. That's an idea. Yeah. <clears throat> Is that on our website? That's on our website anytime. That's right from our homepage. I'm going to use that. Excellent. $200 a month to have us here right now. Two hundred dollars a month. A while back, I got uh, interviewed from by Easy Rock, and uh, the comment was around uh, who had the better sound about us or um, doing Pebblestone. And I said, "Well, we have like twenty-five different color lights in our <laughs> roundabout." <laughs> it was uh, anyway. It went well. Everybody listened and uh, commented on that. All right, so. Uh, we have 15 minutes before the um, actual that uh, story hearing, uh, so I will take a break. Recess, yep. yep. So recess till six o'clock. So I had a schedule for coffee. Bye. I'm going to read out the uh, public hearing opening statement. Uh, it's been shortened considerably from what it used to be, so this is the way it reads now. At this public hearing, Council will consider an application for a zoning amendment for property located on 806 Trans Canada Highway. The zoning bylaw amendment will be introduced by staff presenting a brief synopsis of the proposal. Following the introduction, I will open the floor to the, uh, to the presentations by the yeah. public. Scott, can you give us a report on this, please? I can. Thank you. So while the, the mayor's portion has been shortened considerably, mine's been lengthened considerably, so I'll read my, my part now. Um, at this public hearing, council will consider a District of Sick News Zoning Amendment bylaw number 1007, 2022, an application for a zoning amendment for property located at 806 Trans Canada Highway, legally described as District Lot 497, Camus Division, Yale District, Plan 6134, Except plan KAP 769. The public are invited to make presentation to council, and all persons believe their interest in properties affected by the proposed amendment bylaws shall be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard or to present written submissions respecting matters contained in the proposed amendment bylaws. Please direct all your comments through the chair. Members of the public may, if they wish, ask questions of you following your presentation. However, the main function of the council is to listen to the views of the public. It is not the function of council at this hearing to debate the merits of the proposed of the proposal with individual citizens. Please observe these rules. And if you have any concerns with, with the matter in which the hearing is conducted, direct your comments to the chairperson. Everyone shall be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard at this hearing. No one will be or should feel discouraged or prevented from making his or her views known. If you'd like to make a presentation, raise your hand. If you're attending through Zoom to speak during the, the meeting, please click the hand icon to raise your hand electronically you'll be in the queue to speak. Your final opportunity to comment on the pros amendment bylaws will be during the hearing as members of council are not permitted to receive further submissions after the close of the hearing. Again, please direct all your comments to the chair by raising your hand or electronically raising your hand to speak. I'll now provide a synopsis of the application. So on the screen, you can see um, the ortho photo of the property. It's located at 806 Trans Canada Highway, um, just right behind Tim Hortons. Um, you get access off Rama Road or off the Trans Canada Highway. The OCP designation is uh, Highway Commercial B. 
And the zoning is um, C2 Highway Tourist Commercial. And the proposal is for a new zone, which would be C2A Highway, highway Tourist Commercial Residential. Here you can see the, the site plan. So the proposal is for a six story um, tourist accommodation and residential with 10 units and commercial on the main floor. And the, the 10 units, they're willing to enter into a housing agreement with the district where um, our housing committee could set parameters for who would be available for their, those 10 units. Um, the remaining units, they could um, rent them out as short-term accommodation as like as a continuation hotel, or they could rent them out as uh, multifamily residential as well. So the, the option will be open to them, but 10 of them will be uh, reserved for that, uh, through that housing agreement for um, whoever the, the housing committee deems requires that housing. Um, so the bylaw um, received, uh, would receive third reading and then would have to go to Ministry of Transportation for approval because it's within 800 meters of the Trans-Canada Highway. Here you can see the exterior of the building. This is what it would look like from the, the highway. And um, there is a, it is within the development permit area. Um, so they would, they would still have to come back to council for that development permit for the, the form and character of the building as well. Mixed use high density residential is supported in the uh, highway commercial uh, OCP designation. So here's the, the new highway commercial uh, Tour, highway tourist commercial residential zone. Um, so the, the uses and then the, the visitor accommodation use, uh, multifamily showing the density, and then the maximum height would be 24 meters or six stories. Uh, we did send it out for our referrals. Um, we notified people within uh, 50 meters of the, the development. We also advertised in the two different newspapers for two weeks in a row. And um, these are the responses we received. Um, we did get a preliminary approval from Ministry of Transportation. Um, upgrades will be required at the subdivision stage. They have applied to subdivide. The property is about one hectare in size, and they're looking to subdivide about half a uh, hectare off for the, uh, the new portion. Um, so that would include the parking and the building. And so, yeah, upgrades would be required at the subdivision stage. Um, the fire chief did have some concerns with the, the six stories and it being a wood building. Um, it would be required to be sprinklered. Um, but yeah, it would be a, a much taller building than uh, most of the buildings in Sickness. So the, obviously the, the fire department's wondering about equipment um, to, to access the building. Um, again, this is consistent with the fish community plan. It's consistent with the, the neighboring uses. It's a good transition. There's kind of the, you know, from Tim Hortons and then the existing uh, commercial use and then the, the existing motel use. And then there's a, a medium density residential next to it. So it's good transition. And, um, <clears throat> and then it also provides a, a, a housing that the, the community is looking for as well. Those, those 10 units will fit in well with what we're trying to do in other places. And um, stops recommending that this be given third reading and, um, and that it would be referred to the Ministry of Transportation approval for uh, um, for approval, Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure for approval. Thanks, Scott. All right, is there anybody that uh, would like to speak on that? Is there any hands up? Not at this time. If anybody wishes to address council, please raise your hand. All right. There's one. There. Yeah. Shane yes, okay. What's the name? Shane McKellar. So, hi, Council. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, my question for you is these 10 buildings that you're proposing for behind Tim Hortons, um, are these going to be rented out to tourists or are these going to be low income for workers that need to find homes in the town? Well, what's the actual plan for these buildings, this building? Go ahead, Scott. So it'll be uh, a six-story building and the, the main floor will be like the, the ground floor will be commercial. So they could have retail or uh, like a restaurant. And then the next, um, the next five floors could be a combination of first accommodation or residential uses. Um, the 10 units are gonna be market 
units, essentially. They're not going to be subsidized by, by any government, but they will be market units. And, uh, and they're working with uh, the owners working with BC Housing, and they've also would have to enter into a, an agreement, a housing agreement with the, uh, the district where the district could influence who would be who those 10 units would be available for. And then the remaining five floors could be tourists, like a, like an extension of the Best Western, or they could be rented out as apartments for anybody who requires residential use. Oh, okay, just because, yeah, the, with the housing market out here in Sycamuse right now, um, yeah, I just, I, as much as I like, I love tourists and everything, I think we need to focus on people that live here and places to live. So in, the, in this case, we're, we're doing it through the, the housing agreement. That's an opportunity to, to work with the owner through the housing agreement. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the, the future zoning bylaw, there'll actually be a density bonus for people who provide long-term housing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, thanks, Shane. Any other comments from uh, online? Calling the second time. For the third time, is there any other comments or any other hands up on online? Okay, then I'm going to declare that this public hearing is closed. And we'll go on to uh, 12A, the zoning amendment application number 21-145RZ. 806 Trans Canada Highway. There's a recommendation that the District of Sycamore Zoning Bylaw Amendment number 1007 2022 be given third reading this 23rd day of February 2022, and that the District of Sycamore Zoning Bylaw Amendment number 1007 2022 be referred to the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure to request statutory approval. I need a mover on this, Councillor Malness. I need a seconder, Councillor Bushel. Any more comments on this? Okay, I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor? It's carried unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Scott, for the update. And with that, um, that brings our meeting to a close. So a uh, recommendation at the regular council meeting for February 23rd, 2022 be adjourned at 610. Councillor Balmas, Council Aries, all in favor? Carried, thank you. And thanks for everybody online.